Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host, Josh Turner, also known as Wolf, and known by my enemies as all kinds of other things. Um, but uh, we're not here to talk about those people because all one of them, they're just annoying. So everybody else loves me. That's awesome. I know that uh, my co-host thinks he's the boss and, you know. The one and only. The eternal one. Okay. okay. I, was gonna, I was getting to introduce you, but that's fine. Go ahead and talk over me. Well, I knew you were going to say something. We're going to talk over each other. That's why right. We're going to talk over each other. Ah, and I did whatever. not agree. Okay. I had to stand is, in for this banjo. This is what I go through. Fo- Alec is here with me. You want to speak? Because this guy's going to keep talking. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Great job, <laughs> Great job. Well, back to you, Bob. <laughs> so, anyways, folks, we got a show for you tonight. It's P- PRT uh, Podcast dot uh, com's website. Josh Turner PRT Podcast dot com. That is the name of the, that is the email address. Josh Turner PRT Podcast dot com. We got a Patreon, and I'm going to be doing some work on that, where I do some private sessions, and we talk and talk about things, and you can pick my brain about things. We can get to the bottom of things. We have a show tonight. Obviously, it's October, and so we we have to. You have to talk about spooky stuff. We have to have some good standalone episodes where we talk about some creepy stuff, stories that we were given by different people. This one's a no-brainer, and it should have been done a long time ago, and so I have so many stories now. But I've had people who actually don't believe that these things are are haunted, and I'm like, that's crazy. This is absolutely cemeteries, and they are haunted. Before we get into that, though, don't forget we have Facebook groups. Um Paranormal Roundtable is my group. Paranormal Lounge is Nellie's group, but she also runs the Paranormal Prayer Group. And I also um, am, a, am a member of many other groups, including in Humanoids of Barton Nunley. Uh, we get it. We got a whole bunch of different stuff. You can put your stories up there. You can talk about all kinds of stuff, drop videos, whatever you want to do. I'm associated and affiliated with a lot of cool people in this field and um, authors. And if you were going to, like always, we'll drop this. Uh, We'll put the link on the Paranormal Roundtable group, and if you you're, you leave a comment, you can be chosen to win a prize, which is one of the autographed books of many authors of my friends like Barton Nunley, Lyle Blackburn, Ken Gerhard, uh, Nick Redfern, and so on and so forth. Now, that being said, one other thing, and we will get started. If you want to be my friend on Facebook or Instagram, let me know that you are a listener of the show so I can follow you or on Instagram or I can be your friend on Facebook. Otherwise, it's no dice. There's a whole bunch of people who sent me friend requests and they just sit there because they didn't tell me whether or not they were listening to the show. And I'm not just going to approve you because we have a bunch of, a bunch of mutuals because that never works out. So I try to keep my friends list tight. So we're going to get started here. Uh, if anybody d- does not understand what I'm talking about, okay, it, 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 which there are people that have been arguing with me about it. They say that the dead don't, they don't haunt the cemetery because that's not where they died. But that is where people go and drop a lot of emotional baggage because they go and they visit people's uh, grave sites. So I don't know if that has contributed to some of these stories because some of these stories are pretty pretty gnarly. So I tried to pick some of the best ones that we're going to get into tonight. We're going to go down the list. Uh, and I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't believe that cemeteries are, can be haunted, well, maybe you can understand that they, they can be haunted by creatures, not just uh, ghosts. Well, one thing I was going to say about them not being like where they died, I – I thought that was more with traumatic deaths that that you would be tied to that place, whereas you know just a natural death. I felt like you would follow your body, so you would follow where you would last rest. So like that would be where the spirits would be, because those were the where the the bones were rested. Whereas a traumatic death was where you were forced to be forced to uh, stay there for whatever reason. I, I I guess assuming if you had a uh, deaths of like emotions or something or a strong emotion that kept you to stay. But besides anything specific like that, I don't see any reason why a regular uh, death would cause anyone to stay. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I personally think that the blood and emotions saturate, saturate the environment. So I think that that can contribute to a lot of these hauntings and I'll start with one. Um, the, the first one I'm going to tell you about, it, it is a ghost-type entity. Um, and this one was at a place called White Rock Cemetery. 
Um, this is in B Caves. It's right off B Caves. That's actually where your stepdad is a police officer, right? Yep. So, anyways, that being said, we have this weird um, stories about a woman at the White Rock Cemetery. Then supposedly it's the Lady of the White Rock Cemetery, not to be confused with the Lady in White, because that's not exactly what this is. This is like a it's the the haunting of it's of the White Rock Cemetery, and I've worked there. I've worked at a place d- close to there doing security. Years ago, and I fell asleep, unfortunately, because I was very tired. It was cold, and I uh, I woke up, and I thought I saw a woman walking through the cemetery. And I was like, well, that's odd. So I just kind of sat there watching it, and then she kind of went further, further into the cemetery, into the darkness, and kind of was just gone. And she was wearing white, and, and but I was like half asleep, and it happened really quickly, and so knowing the legend, I just kind of chalked it up to, I don't consider it a paranormal experience just because I thought maybe if there's any shadow of a doubt, I don't count it. You know what I mean? And so I just kind of thought maybe I was just, I was dreaming. I was half asleep. Um, and so I just kind of was like, whatever, that was weird. And so anyways, I went, I, you know, went back to the other side of the property that I was guarding at that time. The cemetery was right there next to where I was at. And uh, another weird thing that happened to me, and I've said, I think I've said this one on the show before, and then we'll get into this one, is driftwood. Um, since I talked about driftwood, I did get a weird, crazy story out of there. I was told to go there um, d- d- when I was working at a company I used to work for, and uh, they were doing some work on the cemetery, and they were actually pulling uh some of the bodies like they were they were moving they were I think they were moving them they were like repositioning the 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 boundaries or something god this was like probably 22 years ago or something years and years ago um and they had one of those uh excavating machines where they dig with the the big uh I don't know what they're called they have like the little scooper scooper thingy whatever I don't know what it's called anyways they had that and they had another machine there and one of those two machines, I can't remember exactly which one it was. It's been so long, but it woke me up because the light came on the machine. And so I got up out of my car to go, you know, whatever, because I was leaned back trying to watch <laughs> a show because, you know, back then I had a little TV with an antenna, you know, and so, <laughs> and so I was trying to watch a show and I, 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 so I turned, so I, I, I put the, the TV away and I got up and I said, that's weird. And then I and then I woke up one time because I fell asleep out there because it was so dead, no pun intended. And I heard like loud whistling noise, and I heard what I thought was talking. Um, and the light came on the machine again because I checked it the one time. Nothing. I knew there was nobody in there, but I had to go look. And when I went when I went to go walk up to it, the machine moved sideways, like like where the the box where the person would be sitting, you know. So I still walked around it, and I climbed up, and there was nobody in there. Um, so yeah, and, and I told the the, the boss. At the place, I said, I said, John, I can't. Uh, his name was John. I said, John, I can't work out there. Uh, you have to hire somebody else to do that. And he's like, Okay, well, I don't have anybody else. Can you just give me one more night? I said, No, I can't. I'm not going to do it. There's, it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's creepy as heck. And there's and, weird um, stuff happening. And I heard like this weird whistling noise at one point that was coming from behind the cemetery. Because it's a bunch of it's the middle of nowhere, and then I heard what I thought was a weird howl that wasn't coyotes. I don't know what that was, and I had already had experience with the dog man, and I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna work here. So we'll we'll go with driftwood. The first uh, the first uh, encounter that was given to me by somebody who heard me talking about that cemetery. This comes from a person named Brian, and you may know him who he is. And he told me he goes, dude, me and my ex girlfriend went out there back in the late '90s. It was 1999. He said, and we went out there. It was right, right before, like when Y two K was coming or whatever, and everybody was freaking out. Before my time, yeah. So they decided they were going to have a little get together, and they were going to go out there by the cemetery or whatever. And he said it was nineteen ninety nine, um, but then later his girlfriend corrected him and said it was actually two thousand. But he said he remembers it being Y two K. Now that could be a Mandela effect. I don't know, but uh, he said it was was right before Y two K. So him and three friends went out there with his girlfriend. So it was five people. And uh, they were walking through the cemetery, and they decided that they were going to play, like, 
tag, basically like base, you know, like somebody's going to stand by the cemetery. You know, these, these were, they were in their late teens. Right. And they said one person was going to stand by one of the headstones and that was going to be home base and everybody had to spread out and try to go to the different corners of the cemetery and then run toward the home base. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah I played this. And game. then, and then one per, and then they had to try to stop them. And if the person could catch the person that whoever, then they had to do it. Whatever, it's like a game, right? There's so many better areas, though. I don't understand location wise why you would choose that. They chose a cemetery because I think they wanted to be in the cemetery. I mean, that's just it's creepy and it's and it's well in the middle well, of nowhere. Oh, the, and they were outside the city limits, so they were shooting fireworks. Well, real quick, Alec, have you ever wanted to play in a cemetery? Like, does that ever seem like an appealing thing? Even like now, ever have you ever seen a cemetery and being like, "That's where, that's my playground." Okay, well, R. Ash did it, and that's why he had a dog man follow him home. Exactly. This is not nor- this. This is weird behavior. So I just Chucky, really don't you know, understand. You know, it. Chucky. Yeah, yeah, we're no. talking about Chucky. And, my dad used to take me to the cemetery. Yeah, and your dad like, oh, used yeah. to. Get, I know both <laughs> y'all's dads now. And I can tell you right now, I, I explored a cemetery with both of y'all's dads. D- 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 I'm not kidding. Nothing happened. I mean, there was nothing happened. It was out in, uh, near New Braunfels or something. But uh, thank God. But we were out there just, you know, doing all kinds of ill stuff. And we said, hey, let's go. And we're, we're with this this girl that Chad was dating at the time. Well, let's go check out the, and, and I, and the cemetery. And I was sort of on a date. And Roger was had argued with your mom. And so Alec, and so he had said, Hey, I'll drive. And so we went driving out in the hill country and we let Roger just drive and we were all hanging out, you know, and, you know, doing whatever. And, uh, we ended up in a cemetery. I mean, your dad liked to hang out in weird places. <laughs> he wasn't digging bodies up or anything, but he, yeah, he liked to go and stuff, you know, and it was just fun well, stuff to do, whatever. Based on the stories uh, you, I've, you've told me of Roger, I could definitely see him just walking through it and having no fear. He doesn't didn't even care. care. At all. Yeah, until, he had, until, until they lived in that duplex and he had the ghost experience with a thing yeah. in the window. Then he did. Then he, then he believed, but it t- it took something happening to him. To, so so anyway, what happened was these people were out there and they were playing around. And this guy named Brian, I've known him for years. Um, he's a little bit younger than me. Uh, but, but he said that they were playing, you know, a uh, tag or whatever with these, with these, it was him and a friend and two and three girls and they were having fun. And he said that we were shooting fireworks, whatever. And he thinks that the fireworks may have caused this. What's even scarier though, was that, you know, right around the same time, but, 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 but a few, six to eight months before that, I think it was when I was there. And so th- I'm, to think that this thing could have been out there while I was there scared the crap out of me. So they hear this weird whistling noise, and they see this thing. Well, he didn't, but one of the girls there was screams at the top of her lungs, um, and, and I think her name was Katie or something. And this thing crawls up over the fence and comes over the top and then flips and then starts to crawl on all fours through the headstones. And it was on all fours, and so they couldn't see where it went because it was ducking in between the headstones, and it was pale. And it was what we would describe as a crawler or a rake. Hmm. That, that's what I told him it looked like. Because when he told me this story several months ago, he's like, dude, I got a story about driftwood or whatever. Because we were talking on Facebook. And he said, dude, that thing looked like a rake. Same, is it pale or transparent? He said it was you know? pale, kind of transparent, translucent, whatever. Um, it wasn't real big. It was only about four or five feet tall. Um, because it stood up at one point and twisted around and then got back down on all fours. Well, it began to chase the first girl that yelled. Like, I think the sound is what attracted it and it began to go toward her. And, but the crazy thing was at one point it turned when, when they got toward the car, they started throwing rocks at it. And one of the guys being Texas, he had a gun, he had a, he had a rifle. So he, he took it out of the back of his car and it was like, and he just, started shooting in that in the direction of this creature and it just like when it took off running real fast it just kind of went poof like it disappeared and i asked him about that and i said did it look like it just like vanished into thin air or did it go into something he said no it looked like it the front part disappeared and then the back part like it went into a portal like like it like it went to a portal now it did climb the fence to get into the cemetery because the girl saw it what, like where, whereabouts was this portal at like right in if like the- well, like they said, it was toward the middle. Like, like if you're if you're the, the way they describe it, they were getting in their vehicle. 
okay, in the car, and it was it was an old Crown Vic, old uh, retired, you know, parent, whatever. And they they there was a big they have big trunks, you know, and he had. So, anyways, he said that they were so scared that the one girl tried to get in the trunk and close herself in it, and he had to stop her and get it under control. And the first girl that saw it, she was screaming. And then my friend said, I got just a glimpse of it at the end. And I see this thing crawling. None of us could, could, got close enough to give a description of what the, the face looked like. They could just see this bulbous-like head and these spider-like limbs, you know, sticking out of it. But there were just four, it was just four limbs. And it ran. And it, like I said, it just vanished into like the ether, you know. Um, but the, the weird thing is, is that, that they think that maybe the fireworks had attracted it or something and it heard the noise and it came. I think the graveyard attracted it. Cause I think rakes are scavengers. If it is a rake, I think. Do you think it was like a ghoul? They eat bodies or I something? I think, I mean, if you're competing with Dogman, Bigfoot, yeah, you're going to eat whatever you I think can. there's Dogman out there too, because yeah. I've gotten stories oh, yeah, in that area. A lot of them. And, and Zane, I mean. He yeah, Zane had a story in the cemetery. Exactly. So, mm -hmm. I mean, definitely. So, if you're fighting with that, you're definitely going to be eating whatever you can. And people well, are I literally. I heard weird howling out there, too, when I was out there. And, I, and they tend to live in the same areas. Yeah. What if uh, What if it was just trying to get to the headstone or whatever and win the game? Maybe it was just trying to win. Oh, yeah. It played with the them. game. It joined yeah. them. It was trying to yeah. get the headstone. Well, it obviously won. <laughs> it won. <laughs> it, everybody ran off. <laughs> So, so here's the weird thing, though. When you when you look at this this case, this isn't the only one I got of a creep of a crawler. Uh, there's another cemetery in Maryland. This one happened, um, or not Maryland? I think it was uh, Maine. There was a story about, about a cemetery in Maine, and I can't remember the name of the town, but it was a long time ago. And this isn't one of my stories. I think I I got it off of Reddit or Fate Magazine. I'm trying to remember where it was, but it was anyway. These people were messing around in a cemetery and they see this white pale looking thing crawl up a tree and then it like jumped from tree to tree and it scared the crap out of the people. They were there. They weren't there playing around. They were there to visit their grandfather's grave. And I just remember reading this story. It's not one of mine, like I said, that somebody had given me. Um, but this thing just kind of was jumping from tree to tree and it was like a white translucent looking creature. Well, I had. I had That's the driftwood story. I had a similar well, I don't know if it's an actual creature, but there's a myth about a creature called like the Aswang or something like that, where it has the like Philippines. A, maybe it has like hooks in his legs, right? And that's how it it uh, it like hooks. No, the Aswang is like a female vampire. Mm, trying to think of what I'm trying to think of. Then, but basically, it has like two hooks for legs, and it'll hang backwards, but it can move really quickly, and it'll grab you with its hands as it's running past on the trees. And it lives in like uh, the Amazon or like not really just real dense jungle, basically. But it's like super fast, but it has like hooks for legs and it just moves like uh, like a bat, basically. I don't know what that could be. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the name, but <clears throat> but I think remember I remember it specifically because it's, it's spotted near graves, gra graveyard. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm almost positive that, that like, you know, the, the, the reason that, the, that these dogmen are seen in near cemeteries is because the, I think they guarded Stargates. For the, for the Anunnaki. That's my opinion. I mean, I think that they, and that was the, 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 the gate between the living and the dead. That's where you shed your meat suit and went into the, to a realm of spirituality. I mean, that's, that's just what it was. Do you, th um, do you think that's where the Chinese got the idea to have those lion statues or, uh, yeah, like guardians, they mm -hmm. were guardians, they were gate guardians. Yeah. I think there were different kinds. I mean, I think some of them were, were, but, different uh, purposes, basically. Yeah, different purposes. Now, here's another one I got. Now, this one's not. It's this isn't super scary or anything, but it is weird, and uh, it involves an orb. Um, there was a guy I worked out with years ago when we worked out down South Austin. I was always kind of a gym rat, and I hung out. And there was this guy named Matt, and he he was a power lifter, and he had told me Matt didn't look like the kind of guy that would run. <laughs> And it was him and this big uh, Japanese guy, and I can't remember his name. He was a bodybuilder. But they, they went out on a date with these two girls, and they took them out to the uh, cemetery out in Oak Hill. And they said, hey, let's go. And it was, it was near Halloween. It was a few days before Halloween. This, Like I said, this was probably 15 years ago. And they, they started trying to scare these girls. You know, like they went and they hid, and they jumped out behind a tree. And this girl takes off running, and she she turns to run, and she flips over a, a headstone, 
She flips herself over a headstone oh, no. and falls. So then she cuts her leg open. So then they're like, we got to take her to the doctor or whatever. Well, as they're walking her toward the car and she's crying or whatever, you know, and they're like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, and we used to work out at Gold's Gym. Like I said, these were big guys. And they said, dude, we're carrying her, right? And then we see this bobbing light that was yellow. He said, it was up in the sky, not like maybe, you know, 20, 30 feet up in the sky. And at first they thought it was the moon. And then they look and they're like, what is that? And and the the dude, Matt, was looking up and he said, dude, it just started kind of coming down, you know, at a weird angle. He's like, and then it got smaller as it got closer because then we realized it wasn't the moon or any kind of like object. It was like the size of a basketball and it just kind of bounced around and hovered in front of their car. Um, and I can't, like I said, I can't remember the other guy's name. He was from Japan. Um, but he was a bodybuilder and he couldn't, they were so scared. They dropped this girl. <laughs> it's not funny, I guess, you know, but they dropped her and her leg was already cut and bleeding because she, they'd scared her and she ran. They made a worse night. Yeah. Worse. And then her friend ran deeper into the cemetery to go hide. And they're like, dude, what are you doing? You know, like, <laughs> you know, so they had to round her up and get them both under control. And then eventually get the courage to go to the vehicle because the, the ball of light didn't stay hovering in front of the car for very long. It was just there. And then it, it kind of bounced on down the road and it was gone, but the girls were too terrified to go toward the car. So eventually after about 20 minutes of wrangling them and then they, and then the girl's legs stopped bleeding and then they realized she probably didn't need stitches, but she hurt her, her lower part of her knee pretty bad. And so she ended up having to get like uh, get it cleaned up, whatever. And they stopped at the Walgreens, but they were just hysterical. And uh, he had asked me if I because I was always collecting stories. If anybody ever heard anything like that, and I was like, no. At that point, I had not. But um, you know, as far as like in that cemetery, now it wasn't the first time I'd heard crazy things in cemeteries. But um, any like, I said, like lights in cemeteries? Is that the only story? No, no, no. There's, there's plenty of those, but oh, okay. like I, I personally, he was asking me if I'd ever heard anything about that cemetery being haunted. No, oh, okay. no, I had not. Um, now I will say this: that wasn't the only thing with lights. There is a cemetery uh, called Salty. No, this one gets weird because that's where a lot of my ancestors are buried. And Salty Cemetery is right outside of uh, Rockdale. It's in between Rockdale and Thorndale. And I got a, two or three stories from this place. Um, I'll start with this one. One was a Ouija board and there were some friends that I had gone to high school with and when I was in Rockdale for a little while and, um, they, because I went to like three, four different high schools, but that, that high school, I, I went to elementary for a little while, then middle school for a little while and then high school for a little while, all different times and to that school. So I knew everybody from there. Um, and there was this one girl who's kind of a loud mouth and she was always like, bragging about how brave she was and blah, blah, blah. So this one friend of mine, he decided to say, hey, let's go. Our friend Lee, he told her, let's go to the cemetery and let's uh, let's see how brave you are. So they went to Salty Cemetery, which is supposedly haunted. A lot of people have seen weird stuff in that cemetery. And um, so they go out there and they, they get a Ouija board. And they did this on a Friday the 13th. I don't know what day, exact, what month or whatever. But they went out there on a Friday the 13th and they had a Ouija board and they, they began playing with the Ouija board. Um, in the middle of the session or whatever you want to call it, they started hearing like footfall, which sounded like a very heavy, heavy man walking. And then they see one of the headstones fall over. And they were like, what the heck? And then the one that was right in front of that one fell over. Like whatever was doing, it was walking, it was knocking the headstones over. These are heavy headstones and what they were telling me. There were six kids. And uh, another another person, this guy's name was Brad. I don't think he was from there. He was from like Cameron or something. I don't know this guy. Um, but they said that he go. He started challenging it. Like, come on, I'm not scared of you. Trying to look tough in front of the girls, you know. Uh, he's like all of 16, thinks he's tough, whatever. And so he's like yelling and thinking he's, you know, going to do something. And, and whatever this was literally had pulled him from, he had, he had one of those hoodies on with a zipper and it had pulled him and like bent him like backwards over a, a, a headstone and held him there. So all these kids get up, they start screaming and freaking out and trying to get away and running in all different directions. And this one girl, um, 
she got slapped like so hard that she thought that it, it, she got a concussion while she was running. Yeah. It wasn't one of the other kids. Like, no, no, she, oh, she no, took I'm out. Sure she got, she took out running yeah. and, and, and she said that this hand, what she felt like was a big icy hand. She felt like it was, it was so large. She said this, it was a person it had to be like a seven foot tall person, but it slapped her and she knocked her down. And she said, it knocked the sense out of her already. Well, I'm going to be honest. She didn't really didn't have a lot of sense. That's why I'm not going to say her name. But anyways, uh, name starts with a T. I'll just say that. So she got slapped. And then everybody freaked out. And then her boyfriend was so scared. He ran and jumped in the back of one of the trucks and was hiding and then realized his girlfriend was laying there. She's screaming for help. So he goes back, being the nice guy that he is, and he helps her up. And then they they got the truck and then they took off. Everybody, there was like three different vehicles. Well, what's crazy about that was there was supposed to be a couple other people that were going to go. And one of them ended up in a real bad accident. And broke his arm and and got 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 hurt pretty bad and, and then he had a sh- bad shoulder injury <clears throat> and that happened um, a single car accident they ran off the road right down the road from there so as they're driving away they see their friend off in the ditch like hurt him and his girlfriend are hurt and so they were all supposed to meet up out there and so so they 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 find their friend and they're hurt whatever. Here's what's really freaky. Okay. I mean, it was already freaky that this happened anyway, right? Well, this is what's really freaky about it. The reason that they wrecked, it wasn't an accident. Something ran across the road in front of their vehicle that looked like a freaking werewolf. So that brings me to the next part about this cemetery, okay? And there's two, there's a couple things that happened. First of all, they they went and did this same thing at the cemetery in Rockdale. <laughs> I'm so sick and tired. And, and something First off, Ouija boards, right? Ouija boards. I was yeah. just about to say. I'm so <laughs> sick and tired of Ouija boards. I'm tired of hearing about it. And it's it's just, it's, like, it's like you know how many times can we warn people? You know they still do it. Well, this, well this you is, know what this was done. I'm way not going to say we warn show, people, but one thing is like our our listeners know better than to try to mess with Ouija boards. So I'm not going to mm-hmm. pretend like it's any of our listeners that are. Going to try to do something foolish like that, but yeah, they're like the Tide Pods of the paranormal. <laughs> yeah, it's right. just like <laughs> Tide Pods. You're eating Tide Pods. Uh, Not so, a game. So here, here's the thing about the Salty Cemetery, and I, I, my friend Don, he had told me years ago, um, he was kind of an armchair researcher because we grew up in an area where Dogman, you know, like 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 we were talking last night um, with with Perry for, as the guy that I work with. Uh, that was a uh, as a security company, and he was talking about Taylor and somebody saying that they had seen a werewolf type creature, you know, in Taylor, Texas. And I think he said his wife was telling him about it or whatever. And Anthony, uh, we were all out there, and um, so it was really, it was really weird. And one of the things that that I remember like hearing from the people, you know, that they were like, you know, from Rockdale. At Thorndale, throw all those little towns around Taylor, the Bartlett, they were always talking about seeing werewolves and stuff like that. I mean, it was always kind of like a, let's go out and look for this creature, you know? Um, but they weren't looking for this. They were out there simply to do this Ouija board seance type thing. Um, and they were, and what, from what I remember them telling me was that they were doing it on the grave of one of these people's grandfather. So they were trying to see if they could actually conjure, like, the grandfather, ask it questions. And the thing was actually answering the questions pretty correctly that corresponded with the grandfather's life. That doesn't mean it was the grandfather. That just means that this thing knew about that person. Um, you know, so anyway, when when the two people who had wrecked their vehicle and had ran off and hit and ran up into a barbed wire fence and hit a post – and the dude, the one guy, wasn't wearing his seatbelt. He was letting his girlfriend drive. That was a big mistake right there. <laughs> <laughs> All the women are cringing right now. But 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 like he got thrown up against the the vehicle uh, against the, it was one of the 1980s Chevy you know trucks whatever, and it broke his arm and his shoulder and he got hurt pretty bad. Like he had to go to rehab and stuff, um, and hit his head. But she was wearing her seatbelt, so, you know, he should have been wearing a seatbelt. But anyways, they described this. It wasn't really large either. It wasn't like a big hulking creature. They said it was like maybe, you know, five, six feet tall, but it was scrawny. 
And it was like a werewolf looking thing that was running on across the road on all fours, hunched over. Um, then it's it, no, it, it, running across the road on two, on two legs, hunched over. And then when it got toward the other side of the road, then it, then it, then it got down on all fours and they swerved keep from hitting it. Um, but she thinks that she may have actually clipped the back end of it and it didn't do anything. It's just like, when it went like right through it. So like it was spectral or something, but there was another story that I got out of that. And this was not too long ago. And this guy says, Hey man, I have a dog man story about the cemetery. You're talking about cemeteries. And I had corresponded with this person and, and he, his dad worked at the power plant in Rockdale. And he said, dude, you know, he goes, when I was a kid, I went out there with my brother and we were running, we were, we had, once again, he had, they had these two girls with them and they, and for some reason, guys love to take girls to cemeteries so they can get scared. And then, yeah, yeah. Scary movies, anything to yeah, get anyone to jump in your arms, I guess. So, um, anyways, they, they took these two girls out to the, to the cemetery to Salty because it's way out in the middle of nowhere. And there's like this little hall right there next to it. And so they go in there, they start walking around the cemetery. They're looking in the windows of the hall they think they hear a noise. They thought they heard somebody clear their throat and they started talking. They're like, what if we, what if we see like, you know, some sort of like man psycho, you know, with a, with a knife trying, you know, and they're talking about all this, this, this silly stuff, you know, that could happen. And this girl goes, I don't know about a man with a knife or whatever, but I, I, I could have swore I just heard something growl. And so they're on one side of the cemetery by the hall. So they have to walk all the way back across to where they had parked near the road because it was muddy, so they didn't want to walk through it. And so they were, like, getting mud all over their shoes and whatever. They're like, hey, let's go. You know, this is this is it's too muddy out here or whatever. Um, and so they started walking back to their car, and, and when they get, like, by their car, they see this thing, something across the road with, gr- with glowing green eyes. And it looked like green dots, just, like, glowing. And... One of the guys, I don't know why he would do this, but his initial reaction was to pick up a rock. And the guy that told me the story's name is David, but he said, D- Dave was like, I don't know why this dude decided to do that, but he took a rock and then he goes, don't do it. And he threw it at this thing. And they're all getting in the car. And when they get into the car, and this happened like I think in the early 90s, um, this thing came charging out from the woods. And this wasn't a small creature, scrawny thing that ran across the road. This thing was like seven foot tall, <clears throat> had a humongous head, and it was just like werewolf looking, big snout, um, giant broad shoulders like a man, just upper body like a man, lower body like a t- quintessential dog man, basically. And it ran right up to the car and just bam, and it hit the car with both of its paws, and, and the car kind of came up. Um, now, he told me, he said, dude, I was in the passenger side. He goes in the front. Uh, he go or he was he was in the uh, driver's side in the front. His girlfriend was in the passenger side, the front next to him, and he said that dude she got a really good look at it. But he goes, I don't think that the the car came up. I think it just rocked it. He said, but then it started to begin to claw at the window. It didn't punch the window or do anything like whatever. But then as they started to drive away, they were sp- spinning out. It's on a gravel road. This thing began to pelt it with rocks, and the back window completely got cracked, and it cracked it. It didn't shatter it, but it cracked it. And so then they, the girls were screaming and freaking out. And so that if you drive in that direction, you're going to have to go back around at some point and go back that way, whether it's on that road or another road over. Um, as I think at that time, that was the only way out. But there might, I think now there's like another road. I'm not 100%. But um, anyway, they, they they drove around for like almost an hour in those back county roads. And then finally they got the courage to go back through there. And lo and behold, they get right there by the cemetery. And the thing is like jumps out by the fence and like runs toward their car. <laughs> like after they had been riding around for an hour, it was like it was just in lying in wait. It was there. And then they said that it, it was going like, rah, 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 like it was trying to talk almost. And I asked this guy, Dave, I said, I've, I've known this guy for a long time and I, I, I didn't know him like real well, but I mean, like he's a lot older than me, but his dad worked at the power plant and he was telling me, you know, we, we started talking because he goes, yeah, I heard you say your dad worked at the power plant, whatever. We didn't, I don't, I don't, I didn't go to school with him, but I've known him for a few years, whatever. 
or several years. And he said, dude, he goes, I got the feeling that if we wouldn't have thrown the rock, we might have been okay. He's like, but that thing was kind of crouched down like it was hiding, waiting to jump, you know? But he goes, when when he threw the rock, it just came lunging out at him. You know, it was like an acknowledgement and then it caused it. You know what I mean? Flesh and blood, purely flesh and blood people would say, Oh, it's because you threw you were in their territory, you threw a rock and it was aggressive, so it attacked. But I say that that was that doing that was basically giving it permission because you acknowledged it. That's what I think was happening. Yeah, I think um, it's like a shark. Like they don't attack if you look at them. Isn't that right? It's like if you maintain eye line with them, that means you're good. But if you can't see the shark, that's when you should be scared. Because they're ambush predators. Mm-hmm. Just so, yeah. I think this, this thing is the same thing. I think it actually just got angry that you would dare to throw a rock at it. Well, a lot of times, like, those people will get out and they'll be swimming around. There's a great white swimming across from them. The great white doesn't just run up because it, it tries to attack from below. I mean, that's why you it, see those it, great pictures of, like, them mm-hmm. coming from below like that in the air. If you're up on the surface of the water, it's the most dangerous place to be. That's why so, I was going to say that's why it's so scary because they have so much force that, mm-hmm. that they're being able, able to propel their bodies out like that. The middle of your body would just be completely, you'd be Oof. completely dead real quick. I mean, I, I know that that footage of that that guy that was snorkeling in Australia, and that great white just just ate him up, dude. It was like, good gosh, dude. And then the, the people are just sitting there, there's just keep fishing, like whatever. It's crazy. But this thing, I think it was definitely trying to kill them. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that the thing was trying to kill them. It was angry. Um, but chunking a rock at is probably not. <laughs> it's not. It's not a very good idea. So 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 back to the people who did the Ouija board thing, right? Okay, so they go to the cemetery in Rockdale, and they decide that they want to play with the Ouija board again. Same people, like four of the six people, right? There was supposed to be eight all together. It was six that showed, but then two that had the wreck. So four of those people, one of whom was in the wreck, which was a girl, this time it was her It was her and her friend who get their hair pulled, and one of them got like literally drugged like partway, not, not like a long way. He said it was about 10 feet, but that's long enough. And they were playing with the Ouija board, and they said, would you hurt us? They asked this thing the question, and it said, yes. And then the the one guy thinks he's being smart. You know, he goes, well, I dare you to hurt one of us. And well, it didn't hurt him. It hurt the girl that he was sitting next to. And it, like, first it, like, kind of didn't did, – the, that girl said that it didn't, like, knock her out or anything like that. It was like somebody took, like, a like a, a like finger slap. You know what that is? Like three or four fingers and hit yeah, you in the head. Yeah, hit the forehead, yeah. Yeah, and knocked her over, and then the girl next to her said said something like, you know, son of a bee, and then that thing grabbed her by her hair and just pulled her down and just began to drag her, and she was kicking and screaming. This happened in, like, in front of four, in front of three of the people who were screaming and freaking out. And so I asked the, the one guy, I said, dude, what would inspire you to go back and do it again? You know, yeah, he it's goes, like Jumanji. You did ask. Yeah. Jumanji. Yeah. <laughs> And I was going to say... Like, how much do you need <laughs> like, to keep doing it? You know? It like, didn't hurt him physically. It just hurt him, like, his aspirations for the night. It ruined his aspirations his, for the it night. Ruined, it hurt we, him. We're going to assume that his aspirations were not of the moral, you know, kind. And um, they weren't just... He wasn't just trying to go back and play Nintendo with her. No, he was definitely... But he, he had yeah, to spend he, it in the he, hospital or something. He got what he had coming to him. Well, they finally they finally uh, got... It, it let her go. And then they heard this like rustling noise coming from the corners and they see this black shadowy looking thing that what they described looking almost like if, if like if you see like a Bigfoot, you know, and maybe I led him a little bit because I was like, I asked him though. I was like, do you think it was that it looked kind of like a Bigfoot, like kind of because the way he was describing it, you know, and he goes, yeah, kind of like it was like there in the corner. And I was like, well, do you think that's what grabbed the girl? And he goes, I don't know, man. I think it was two different things. But what are the odds that somebody would see something like that at the corner of the cemetery? But then they heard this growling noise in the middle of coming from nowhere. They don't know where it came from in the middle of the cemetery. They all ran. And I knew somebody who used to go and he, he would cut the grass and stuff there when I was like a kid. He was like a kid that I went to school with. And I asked him one time and I was like, hey, man, I was like, did you, did you ever have anything weird happen there? Because even as a kid, I was curious. Just, you know, about the spirit world and stuff like that. It was, I was never into, like, monsters or anything like that, but the ghosts, you know, because I had weird experiences. 
And uh, he said, no, nah, dude, I cut the grass with my dad and this, I don't, nothing ever happened. Of course, it's daylight, you know. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, mean. That doesn't really say much, though, unfortunately. I never really got any other stories out of there, though, like of anything happening. But, but I mean, who the heck? Well, I don't know a bunch of people who've gone out there and played with Ouija boards I was going to either, say, you know? like, I don't think people are out there tempting fate like that. Like, these people obviously were. I mean, once it's, you know, foolishness. Twice it's stupidity. <laughs> And I, let me ask you this, Alec. You're talking about your dad, and I've known, I knew your dad since like 1995, 94, 95. Um, and you were such you were a little baby, you know. When, and um, of course, I knew your yours, Tony, since you were the I, I, you, this is your stepdad. I met you when you were like eight or nine. Um, did Chad ever take you any cemeteries? Oh no, no, he never did that. What I about mean, your dad? You, you said he did, right, Alec? Yeah. Um... One time, the one time I really remember, uh, he took me to the cemetery and uh, first we went by the grocery store and got some snacks and um, <laughs> like and magic. then we go to the cemetery and uh, he told me we were going to go lich egg hunting, which is where apparently he would put down chicken eggs and hide them at random graves, and I would have to run around and try and find them to smash them all. And uh, and then I f- he's like, we're going to find the lich nest. And there were like, you know, 20 eggs at this lich nest after we sm- I smashed all these lich eggs. And then he's like, hold on, I'll be right back. I have to, I have to go over here really quick. So he just runs off. And I was standing there, like, looking at this lich egg nest, and all of a sudden, uh, from behind a gravestone, like, right around me, this uh, person uh, or lich jumps out and just starts, like, running toward me and yelling and stuff because I was near this lich nest, and uh, I was, like, screaming and running away. And then uh, he took off his uh, his mask, and it was my dad's friend. And he had <laughs> dressed up and hidden in the trunk at the grocery Who store. Who was that? It was this guy named Greg. I don't remember this guy. They called him. That's like, about Greg Hill, aren't you? Um, I don't know his last name, but I think they called him like Peabody or some some weird some weird name. Peabody. Oh. Was he black guy? No. Okay, that wasn't Greg Hill because Greg Hill was a friend of me and your dad's. Uh, that's crazy, man. Like, like his, his Ro- Roger. And speaking of which, me and Roger and that guy I just mentioned, and another another guy named Jackie, we all went out to a cemetery one time, um, and it was I don't know what we were doing out there. I think he was out near. Oh, no, it, it was. Uh, I want to say it was out in Spicewood or something like that. But anyway, there was this crazy. Uh, guy that was out there just wandering around you know and he had no shirt on and he had like those old timey coaches shorts on and he just like we were out there just like hanging out talking walking through the cemetery and i can't remember what we were doing and i think it was i think roger was scoping it out because he wanted to take you out there or something to scare you and he goes this place looks pretty scary you know we should go out there and like maybe that's where y'all you were at there are a lot of hills. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, because I remember going out there, and and it's funny because it was Greg that we were with, and he was like, "Hey, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna scare my son. He likes to go into the cemetery and hang out, you know." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> Roger was a unique person, very very unique guy. I miss him, but uh, and I just remember this weird guy, like just it was out in the middle of nowhere. This guy just came like walking by on like a ten speed with a flat. And he had no shoes, which I don't know how his feet were, like, not all messed up from the pedals. And he came up to us, and he had this long, scraggly hair. You could see his scalp, you know, and he was weird looking. And he was just like, you guys give me a ride. And it was my friend Greg's car. And Greg's like, hell no, dude. I don't know you, you know. And Greg was like, this is this is how black people get killed in movies and stuff. <laughs> like, he goes, it'll be me who gets killed first, you know, because this is crazy dude. And he looked like that dude from uh, Chainsaw Massacre. And, and my brother makes good head cheese. Eh. You know, waiting for him to, to pull a knife out and cut his hand open. And Roger's like, get the heck away from us, dude. And we just, like, we left. But anyway, I think that's the cemetery where we were we were at. But here, here's a, here's a weird thing. There is a cemetery called Oak Grove, and it's I think it's on Spicewood Springs Road, which is different from Spicewood, the, the whatever. 
And this one involves a really weird story. Um, these were friends of my, they were friends of my friends, basically. My friend Choi, who's a Korean guy. And I know who, you know who that is, uh, Tony. Yeah. He was one of my gangsters. I mean, I've friends, never but, met him personally, but, but I do. Yeah, I know I'm, of him. I'm sure you've heard your dad and me talk about him. But, uh, and Scorpion. But uh, anyway, he, he, Choi was, he's actually uh, in prison right now because he was, he was a criminal. He did a lot of criminal things. So going to a cemetery and hanging out was nothing to this guy. But he took some of his friends that that were uh, and one of this one one of the girls was a South Korean immigrant, and and her 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 father or her stepdad had had was a soul had been a soldier in in South Korea, married her mother, and then they came over stateside. So she was like of the, in that culture, like you don't go play around in cemeteries. This is not something you do. I mean, you know. It's just not correct. But these American Asian kids, they were just like, yeah, come on, let's go to the cemetery. Let's let's do all this crap. Let's play around, blah, blah, blah. And it was right after Fourth of July. And they wanted to once again, they were pop, they wanted to pop fireworks. And then they they were there's there were legends, and there's always been legends, of a black cat that would roam around in that area like a panther. And people had seen it like walking and drinking out of the 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 waterfall, whatever. Well, one of one of the creepy stories I got about this demonic black cat, and I say demonic because it was down on all fours, like with its head down, drinking water, and it was right after it had rained a lot, so the, the one of the little waterfalls was overflowing, and they said that its neck was it stretched its neck out so that it could it could go from the bank down into the water without getting its feet wet, and these people were walking and they saw that and they were like, "What the heck?" This thing is literally like craning its neck, and then its head went back, like 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 unnatural, like not like a cat would. And then when it turned and looked at him, it had green eyes, like there again, the green eye thing. And so they just were like took off running down the trail. It didn't chase him or anything. And then they they just they heard like this, you know. Um, so anyway, I had told Choi that story, and then Choi was like. Well, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go to the cemetery or whatever and check this out. And we, it wasn't like it was, um, like it was like, it wasn't like a real long encounter, but it was, it was, it was scary. You know what I mean? So they, they all, there was four of them. They all went to this uh, cemetery. They parked near this little, little uh, side road or whatever. And they, they walk down, they go into the cemetery and they walk around. Nothing happens. They get ready to walk out, and they're like, well, this is boring. It's a little small cemetery. And they hear this loud growl, and they look over, and there's this black cat. And it's on the other side of the fence, and it just le- leaps over the fence and just starts casually walking toward them, wagging its tail. And they said that one of them shined their light toward it, and the eyes began to glow really, really bright green. Not like, you know, how you see like a nocturnal animal, but like bl- bright green, you know? Well, I, it's not like a shine, right? It's more like they're glowing no, independently. No, it was glowing. Yeah. And when they took the light away, it was still glowing. So then they said, ugh. And then so they all took off running. So this cat started chasing them. And they got to their vehicle. And right they got to their vehicle, the cat leapt up on the back of the vehicle and then climbed over the hood. And then they took off. Here's the really freaky part. Like if that wasn't freaky enough... Choi told me and y'all's y'all's dads basically told me and told all of us that this thing like vanished. Like like it didn't fall off the car. They didn't see it go left or right. And as they're driving around, you're scared to death running down this road. They keep thinking that this thing is gonna fall forward onto the hood or they're gonna see it fall off to the side, and they never did. So when they got to the to 360. You know, when they got to that point, you know where the, that that spot is, probably on 360, right there where the where there's like a creek that goes underneath it. When they get to that spot, they're terrified. Like they're not, you know, they're like, "Is it still on the roof? Do you think it's on the roof?" And they're like, "It didn't come off." So one of them like gets brave enough to try to look, or he he, he was going to look, and his the girl that he was with was holding him so tight he couldn't even get get her grip off of him to look. And he he goes, man, my friend was so scared to to look, but he was going to do it. And he goes, I kept thinking, maybe maybe his head, he's going to get swiped off of him, you know. So he's like, no, don't do it, don't do it. So then they they drive back into town, and they get up there to North Austin, and they pull into the parking lot where the Sam's is at. You know where that Sam's is at, Tony. We go there all the time. 
And they pull in right there, right into that parking lot. And then finally they got the courage. There was another car. They said it wasn't that late at night. It was about 1030 or something. They see another car drive by. Nobody's looking like there's some weird animal on top of their car. They finally all got out. Well, here's here's another creepy thing about it. The one girl that had, that had come over from Korea, she told her mom about it. And her mom said, you should never have gone to that cemetery. She's like, the, the next night, because she was at her their friends for the weekend, right? She's like, the next night, uh, their dog ended up being chased in the yard by this giant black cat. And it ran and it ran into the house, like terrified. And she was like, why is, why is the dog yelping and freaking out? And she goes and looks, and there's this big black cat just sitting there wagging its tail in the backyard. Like, so that's not a coincidence that that thing showed up there. So that, that to me is definitely a, um, there's no way to describe, I mean, to explain that, you know? I don't know how to describe it. Like, I'm still trying to figure out what the heck it was doing with its neck. It's like yeah. Inspector Gadget, like an animal, or whatever the heck it is, is well, able to extend itself however it wants. Well, that story there was given to me by my friend Eddie. It wasn't him. It was his brother or was his half-brother or whatever that, 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 that it happened to him. Um, or I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. It was his half-sister and her boyfriend. And they they basically told Eddie, and then Eddie told me and D, and and you know probably your dad too, Alec, all of them. We, we hung out with all those guys, and we were at the club, and there it was Halloween, and we were talking about scary stories. And he goes, "Dude, it wasn't a very long story." Um, and I haven't done an episode on just black cats. I've done stuff about black cat on two legs, like you know, but. For some reason, black cats only interest me that much. But when you get a story like that one, you know, and I thought, well, do I do it about black cats or do I do it about the cemetery? I think this, this putting them together in the cemetery is because there's some connection there. But th- that one had nothing to do with the cemetery. And it was just a black cat that looked like it elongated its neck. Um, those was in broad daylight. That, that wasn't at night. Like they weren't walking around at night. Uh, when Choi and them went to the cemetery, though, that was at night. And I have a whole bunch of stories, man, from friends of ours from the old days, dude. I could tell you like a bunch of stuff that people told us because they knew that I collected these stories. And every now and then one of y'all's dads would bring me somebody and be like, hey, tell them the story. And then I would get it and then I would go home and, and put it to paper, you know, if I didn't have my notepad with me, which I usually did. But uh, that that one there was weird. Um, I, I think that this is the same entity. But I haven't heard hide nor hair or gotten any other stories of that cat in that area in a long time. So I don't know if it was just something that was there that was transient, you know, like maybe passing through and it just stayed there for a while or something. Because, you know, these demonic entities, they just do weird things. I can't I can't decipher what they're up to. I mean, I don't know what they're doing. You know, it's just a weird. It's a weird thing, you know. Okay, folks, so that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, Tune in to the next episode, and thank you for listening to PRT. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Good night.